Welcome back to our fabulous unit on the basics of probability. Today we're going to talk about the multiplication and addition rules. And you're going to learn what the word and means, and you're going to learn what the word or means. So with any unit, you always have to learn the new vocabulary. And spoiler alert, the whole lesson is going to be summed up on this slide right here. So our first word is and, and our second word is or. And means to multiply, or means to add. Thanks for being here. Just kidding. We actually have to go a little bit deeper into this. So let's start with the multiplication rule. For the multiplication rule, the key words that we're looking for are and and then. And those indicate that we have two or more things happening together or consecutively, okay? So the notation is probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. Now, a simple uh, probability problem is if you have a mom, she's gonna have a baby, what's the probability that she's gonna have a boy? It's one half. What if she's gonna have three boys? What's the probability of that? Well, that's basically like asking, what's the probability that mom will have one boy and then one boy and then one boy? Well, we know the probability of having one boy is one half each time. The probability of having three boys, we multiply those one halves together and we get one eighth. Let's do some more practice. Okay, we have a surgeon operating. He has four operations to complete. He has a 90% success rate on the first three surgeries and that drops to an 85% success rate on the final surgery. So what's the probability that all four surgeries are successful? Here's our four surgeries. The probability that the first one is successful is 90%, and the second one, and the third one, and the probability that the fourth one is successful is 85%. So to find the probability that all four are successful, we multiply those together, and we have about a 62% success rate for all four. What's the probability that none of the four are successful? Let's pull up our four surgeries. If the probability that the first one is successful is 90%, the complement of that is 10% that it's not successful. Same for the second surgery, the third surgery, the complement of 85% for the fourth surgery is 15%. So the probability that none of them are successful, we multiply all those together and we get this weird number. When your calculator shows you this weird number, let's see what we do about it. So we get 1.5 e to the negative fourth. That e to the negative fourth, that's scientific notation. That negative four says we have to move the decimal point back four spaces and then add the zeros back in. So now we know, not in scientific notation, that the probability that none of the four surgeries are successful is really low, 0.015%. <laughs> okay, what's the probability that at least one of the surgeries is successful? How do we do that one? Okay, another quick note. If 100% is all of the possible outcomes of the four surgeries, and we know that the probability that none of them is successful is that little slice, 0.015%. That means the rest of that area, something is successful, right? So what's the probability that at least one of the surgeries is successful? Well, it's the whole pie minus that 0.15%, which is 98.5%. So we're using the complement to solve that problem. Okay, let's move on to the addition rule. In this case, our key word that we're looking for is or. The notation is the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Whew. Here's the thing. This works for mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive situations. And that's addressing this part of the formula right here. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have a non-mutually exclusive situation, which means two things at some point can happen at the same time. That's where we have this overlap. 
Now, if we want A or B, we don't want the and part, so we have to subtract that out. Let's look at mutually exclusive. A and B never overlap. So when we subtract the probability of A and B, that A and B, it'll just be zero. So either mutually exclusive, non-mutually exclusive, you can use the same formula and it'll work out just fine. Let's put it into practice. So we have a standard deck of cards. What's the probability of drawing a six or a heart? First, we find the probability of drawing a six, which is four out of 52. Then we find the probability of drawing a heart, which is 13 out of 52. So the probability of drawing a six or a heart is four out of 52 plus 13 out of 52 minus the six of hearts where they overlap, one over 52. So we get 16 over 52, which is about 31%. Let's try another one. What's the probability of drawing a six or a jack? Again, the six is four out of 52. The jack is also four out of 52. Probability of a six or a jack, four out of 52 plus four out of 52. And then they don't overlap anywhere. So we subtract zero out of 52. So we have about a 15% chance of getting a six or a jack. Now, both the multiplication and addition rules also work in frequency tables. Here we have a local ER. They have a database of blood donors. And if they just pick a blood donor at random from the list, what's the probability that, that the blood owner has either type O or a negative blood type? So probability of O is 184 out of 409. The probability that the donor has a negative blood type is 65 out of 409. And we have to subtract the O and negative possibility. And so we've got about a 54% chance. What about um, the probability of an O or A blood type? So O is still 184 out of 409. A is 164 out of 409. They don't overlap, so we can subtract zero. And we have about an 85% chance of getting an O or A blood type. Let's do one more. Probability of A, B or negative. So A, B is 16 out of 409. Negative is 65 out of 409. We have to subtract where they overlap. And so we've got about a 19% chance there. So that's it, the multiplication and addition rules. And you learned two new words today, and and or. <laughs> Good luck, thanks for being here.